Hello again, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. It's uh, Sunday now, 9.16 a.m., and it is the 23rd of September, 2018. Okay. Um, as I told you in my little video I put up a little bit ago, I wanted to bring you this Bible study. It's, I just, okay, let me be honest. I found this video yesterday called The Feast of Tabernacles. Let me move this out of the way. Sukkot, Wine, Water, and the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to link it in the description box. Although, uh, I'm not sure I agree with all of it, but I have to give him credit because he did the work of putting together all the scriptures I'm going to use. And I thought, this is really good, this part that I'm going to share. So I want to give him credit, you know, because he put it together. The rest of it, there's a few iffy things I'm not sure of. But you can use your discernment or don't watch it all the way. Whatever you want to do. I'm just trying to be fair to him. You know, you're not supposed to plagiarize, use somebody else's work, and then claim it as your own. We should never do that. All right, so what I'm going to do is pull this forward and enlarge it so I can see it better. All right. Um, he's talking about when, when Jesus said that he was coming, he said, In an hour ye think not. And though there are specific places in the word, where it says, no man knows the day or the hour, okay? Other folks have said, well, that refers to the second coming, which we know won't happen till right before the millennial reign, when Jesus sets his feet on the earth. Well, this might give you reason why people say that. All right, in Matthew 24, verse 44, Jesus says, Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Okay, um, after I did my last video, I just checked to make sure all was good with it. I like to do that. And I noticed there was already two comments. And as one of them said, they thought that the feast days that God appointed for his chosen people would be fulfilled for the Jewish people like the first three. But then Pentecost was all about the Holy Spirit coming for the church. So that wasn't just for the Jewish people. So I, I think that we can believe. That's weird. Somebody has something that looks like a camera in their window. With a wire leading, like, down to plug it in somewhere. That's strange. Oh, well, let's not worry about that. Back to the scriptures. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Okay, this is going to be all about why we should know, if not the hour per se, we should know the time frame. Because Jesus got on to the Sadducees and the Pharisees saying, how is it that you know, uh, you can tell by the weather what it's going to be like tomorrow. You can tell by the skies. If, if it's red at night, it's going to be good weather tomorrow. If it's red in the morning, it's going to be bad weather today. But you don't, you didn't know, uh, you did not know the hour of your visitation, okay? So right there tells you that he didn't mean an exact 
3 o'clock p.m. hour, but a time frame that Jesus would be coming, that the Savior was coming to save them. And as many of them, even the disciples, clear up into the ascension hour, asked him, is this the time when you're going to restore the kingdom uh, to us? Kind of, you know, is this when you're going to take over the king? And I'm like, duh, they still don't get it. I can't imagine what Jesus thought. And then he went up into heaven, and they're standing there staring up. And the angel said, why stand ye there staring up into heaven? Let me tell you, this Jesus, this same Jesus that you saw going up, will come down in like manner. Okay. He's going to come down in like manner to the Jews. I don't believe, well, maybe the second rapture, but not the first one. We aren't going to see him in the clouds. We're just going to poof, be gone and out of here. And I, I believe that's how the second rapture will be. And I think at the time when Jesus sets his foot on the earth is when people see him in the clouds. But, According to Revelation, they, Revelation 6, when the seals are being opened, when the great earthquake happens, and all the people go running into the deep underground military bases, into the caves, as the Bible puts it, they're going to say, um, Rocks fall on us, for the great and terrible day of the Lord has come, and who can stand it? You know, who's who? how can we survive it? That kind of thing. Okay. I didn't mean to get off on that. That just came to me. Okay, so I'm going to tell you why we're supposed to know the hour, why we should be watching, and why it is a big deal for us to watch. And think ahead as to when could it be this time? Could it be this time? Okay, it didn't happen this time. When could it be? And let's look forward to the next possible time. Okay? All right. Luke 12, verse 40. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. So... It's possible that this is not referring to the rapture, but we don't know that. So I think we should we should have it in our minds that it could mean that, even though Jesus doesn't actually come to earth until the end of the Great Tribulation. All right, let's continue. Both of these verses are telling us that at a very unlikely and unexpected time, he is coming. It is not saying that nobody is going to know when. Not these verses. Okay, moving on. Matthew 24, 48. But and if that evil serpent shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. This is talking about a Christian who, tired of waiting, he's a servant of the Lord now, he's in charge of other servants. In charge. What does that remind you of? Pastors, teachers, Sunday school leaders, one of us, if you're tired of waiting. All right, so let me continue. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants. And don't we smite with our words. And to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of 
because he stopped looking. This servant, he calls him an evil servant because he turned away and stopped watching, stopped expecting. This is why we cannot stop expecting. We have to maintain our blessed hope. And keep looking forward to the next thing Jesus might be. Maybe it's, this thing. Maybe it's this feast. Maybe it's this feast. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I know it's hard. Because then you get disappointed. And you wanted it to be that, that day. But we have to keep watching, brothers and sisters. Alright, Luke 12, 45 says. But and if that servant say in his heart my lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens this is similar to the last one and to eat and drink that tells me they quit fasting and praying you know we can't fast all the time obviously we would die of starvation but that's what I look at that as when he shall begin to beat the men's servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. And at an hour when he is not aware. Oh, and in that comment, that person said, for when they say peace and safety, then Jesus shall come. Let me minimize this. I have to open up a new one because that caused me to think. Um, yeah, this person has a point. Let me see who you were. Under, I'm going to read it to you right. Okay, it was a blessed hope. Great name, huh, for a channel? Uh, I, I want to say it's a girl because she's got a pink circle with a tree on it. But not necessarily. <coughs> Probably a girl. Jeannie, I believe all these feasts and festivals are shadow for the millennium. For what the Jewish people repopulating the earth have to do on God's feasts in those days. I believe the rapture is different from these events. And that's possible. Remember, we were told, as they say, peace and safety, sudden destruction comes and they will not escape. Just something to think about. Yes, and it did give me pause. Okay, so now let's go back to this list. It gave me pause to realize, yes, that's true. See, we have so many scriptures to go by. You've got the ones that I already mentioned. No man knows the day or the hour. And now you've got these. In an hour you think not. And then also, the one I just said... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. About when they say peace and safety. Now we've been hearing that as they talk about the peace accord, peace deal. Um, we've heard it and heard it and heard it. So we just don't know when. It's kind of like every year we look to the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Trumpets. It comes and it goes. It It's kind of the same thing. You just have to hope. Keep that hope. Hey, this might be it. Excuse me. All right. This gentleman who does this channel, he's in, he's in uh, Israel, by the way. 
and he's got a ball cap on it's got Hebrew on it cool all right Jesus seems to be inferring here remember I just read the Luke 12 45 about the servant says in his heart my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and be drunken the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he is not aware okay Jesus seems to be inferring here to the Jews he put in parentheses that he is coming at a time of festivity possibly eating and drinking that reminds me of just as in the days of Noah there will be eating and drinking marrying giving in marriage festivity so it's possible Christians were told by Paul that we who are in the light will not miss the day so these verses cannot apply to the church we who are in the light will not miss the day I wished he'd put that scripture there Jesus also tells the church in Revelation 3 3 that we will know the hour he is coming if we are watching okay that's what I was going to add so I need to minimize this go back to here I'm going to read to you what Jesus says to I think it's the church of Smyrna Smyrna Revelation chapter 3 all right <coughs> Sardis excuse me and unto the angel of the church in Sardis right now pay close attention to this some of you need to hear this these things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars that's Jesus I know thy works see the spirits of God let me back up just a second and kind of reiterate this point the Holy Spirit is not just wisdom which is a feminine noun but the Holy Spirit this, this refers to him as the seven spirits of God seven is the number of completion the Holy Spirit is the spirit of our God who is a masculine being Jesus said when you see me you see the father the father and I are one um, I say nothing that the Father doesn't give me. Um, okay, help me, Holy Spirit. Don't let me lose my train of thought. I believe he's saying that we are in agreement on everything. So when you see me or hear me, you're seeing him. He, I don't know that he's saying they look alike. They might but he's saying he looks like me he talks like me he thinks like me and so on that's that's how I take it and the Holy Spirit is their Holy Spirit and woe unto anyone that blasphemes the Holy Spirit okay the Holy Spirit is the omnipresence of Almighty God he isn't just a being up in heaven keeping God the Father company he's everywhere and he's in us so maybe if anything he's neutral but my spirits feminine a guy's spirit is masculine and we know that God the Father and Jesus his son are masculine okay I'm gonna move on from that 
backing up. These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. <clears throat> this, of course, is King James Version on the blueletterbible.org. Verse 2. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. He's telling them you're lacking in some areas. Verse 3. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. See the need for repentance? When you slip up and you start getting a little bit off into this new age thinking or stuck in a rut of a doctrine, doctrinal beliefs that are not in scripture, same thing. Hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So, does that have to do with the rapture? It very well could be. Um, because I think think that once the great tribulation begins anybody with math ability can count seven years and know a pretty good estimate of when Jesus is coming back you see the first rapture is going to be the one we really have to watch going by what the Bible says and what his prophets or servants have said, because Amos 3, 7 says, Surely the Lord God does nothing, lest he reveals it to his servants first. Okay, moving on. Verse 4. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white. For they are worthy. This is talking about some churches that are, as a rule, not living right, have a few people in them that are. Okay? So, that tells me that just because a person is this denomination or that denomination whatever and the majority of them are not doing right there are a few that are they just for whatever reason maybe family maybe they're a volunteer there and they feel they can be helpful to the kingdom in some way I don't know but they're in this church and they are not defiled their garments are white because they know to repent and they know to love God above all else and to love their neighbor as their self. Okay? Jesus is saying, They shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment or clothing, white robes. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, backing up to verse 5. That was verse 6, by the way. He says, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life all you people and it's probably not you people I'm probably preaching to the choir here 
But if you believe in once saved, always saved, listen up. Right here tells you that is not true. Your name can be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. If you follow a doctrine such as the gifts of the Holy Spirit died with the apostles and therefore they're no longer for us. There's no need for us to pray in the Spirit because we all speak in English. And when they got the gift of praying in tongues, it was so they could preach to people of other nations. That is such a lie from the devil. The gift you get when you become filled with the Holy Spirit is a heavenly language. You're talking to God. You're not talking to, you're not preaching to the crowd and each man hearing it in his own language. Go to Acts. Read that. And that's what happened when the Holy Spirit fell on those 120 people. Peter started preaching and all these men, people from different nations that were there for the feast day started hearing him in their own language. What a miracle. It was amazing. Amazing. But that's not the uh, evidence of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The evidence is getting the heavenly language, which is between you and God. You're not supposed to do it out loud. Unless you're praying for somebody, you're laying hands on them and you're praying for them and it comes out. Don't stifle it. Never stifle it if that's happening. Okay, so that's what I wanted to read to you out of the book of Revelation. Now I'm going to go back to this. Blow it up. Okay, now let me go back to where, okay. So he was talking about, Jesus also tells the church in Revelation 3.3, that we will know the hour he is coming if we are watching. All right. It was only at the wedding in Cana, John chapter 2, and on Tabernacles, John chapter 7, that Jesus himself said, My hour or time is not yet come. Remember in John 7 when he was with his brothers and they were about to all go up to Jerusalem for the feast and they asked him, aren't you coming? And he said, I'm not going up yet. And a lot of versions have taken out the word yet, which makes Jesus sound like a liar because he says, I'm not going. You see how the change of one little word can change the meaning of a story? The whole story makes Jesus look like a liar. Oh, I'm not going. He said, I'm not going yet. My time is not yet. Okay, moving on. He goes up later, kind of quietly makes his presence known. He knew they were gunning for him. They wanted him dead. So anyway, that's what that was all about. That's in John chapter 7. His hour to be glorified was at Passover. But could the hour of our glorification be at the very time when Jesus said it wasn't yet? For example, at the wedding in Cana, where water is turned into wine, and at Sukkot, where the wine and water libation occur. I had to look that up. Libation basically means to drink, uh, usually referring to an alcoholic beverage, but not necessarily. As it says here, water and wine. Okay, um, yeah, the uh, dictionary that pulled up actually used the Bible 
drinking of water and wine is an example of the word libation. If Israel had accepted Jesus, which if Israel had accepted Jesus, which festival would be most appropriate to celebrate? Well, brothers and sisters, I'm just of the opinion that Jesus was born during the Feast of Tabernacles because they laid their food for the week, or maybe they brought it out fresh every morning, I don't know, but they laid it in a manger. And we know that Jesus is the bread of life. And how, how prophetic was that, that their bread, sustenance for life, was placed in a manger and then we're told that Jesus was laid in a manger because there was no room for him at the inn. It doesn't say he was born in a cave. It doesn't tell us he was born in a sukkah or a tabernacle. It doesn't say, unless it's in one of the books that got removed because they wanted to celebrate Christmas in December. So if any of you know or have read these books that got removed, tell me, is there any reference to Jesus being born at tabernacles or in a tabernacle and laid in the manger? I would like to know. Okay, so the whole point of this is that we have to keep watching because Jesus is going to come in an hour ye think not. I do believe this is referring to the rapture. I think that if we stop watching, we're going to go astray. We're going to get caught up in the world while Jesus has been pulling us out of the world. So we can do what we're doing, watching, telling others, yeah, losing them as our friends and our families just like, uh, you know, no, I don't want to hear about that no more. Don't even come around anymore. And that's sad, but Jesus said, if you don't hate your father or mother or your son or your daughter, you're not worthy of me. And I could look that up. You could too. He said that. He who does not hate father or mother or son or daughter or he who loves them more than me is not worthy of me. And that's the truth. Jesus has given us everything we have. He put us in the families that he put us in. He gave us the children that we got. And for whatever reason, if they've turned away, which most of them have, the Lord has pulled us out of the world. And brothers and sisters, I implore you, I think that's the right word, don't turn away. Don't turn away. Let's keep our eyes on the prize. Let's run this race in such a way that when we break through those clouds into that glorious heavenly realm, we will hear, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Isn't that what you want? I know it is. We all want to hear that. So with that I say, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection and over each and every one of you as well. Be blessed this day. I hope 
it's a peaceful day for you. And um, I'll just talk to you later. Bye for now.